Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Deeply, deeply depressing article in one of the American newspapers yesterday. I can't remember which one, but I can remember the byline of the journalist um, for obvious reasons. It's called Matt O'Brien, Matthew O'Brien, writing about how when politics in any country, he was writing more about America, but I think it's happening here a bit, becomes so polarised. Everything's a fight, everything's a scrap, everything's a furious row. Um, history suggests that things don't get better until something truly awful happens. Are you, you now are sitting in London or... Manchester or Birmingham or Kidderminster or North Berwick or wherever you may be, and hearing on your news something that two years ago would have struck terror into your very heart, the idea of a Western democratically elected political leader holding a military parade full of tanks and weaponry, the kind of thing we used to laugh at the North Koreans and the Russians for doing, which of course are not Western democratically elected leaders, they are totalitarian oppressive regimes and now Donald Trump's doing it which I, I told you but I've got to be honest with you I keep doing all these I told you so's I had my tongue in my cheek when I said it'll be military parades by Christmas I mean I was out obviously by a few months but I genuinely said it I also said don't be surprised if he turns up in a uniform and I'm going to say that again but I'm going to take my tongue out of my cheek I think Donald Trump might, might get a uniform he could borrow the one off that Jacob Rees-Mogg fanboy who chinned the woman at that university um, speech the other day, couldn't he? The one who's subsequently been found to like dressing up as an SS officer. But Trump will get his own one made. Uh, Tongue-in-cheek or not tongue-in-cheek? What do you... Because if I'd said military parade two years ago with tanks coming out Fifth Avenue and all that sort of thing, you'd have laughed at me, right? If I'd predicted this is what will happen next, I'd get over yourself. So if I say I would not be amazed if, if he gets a kind of Mugabe-esque uniform full of medals that don't really mean anything but look great, like Ceausescu, I mean, just look at the history of the same kind of politicians. I don't know. But we're going to talk about Tesco. It, it, not Ceausescu. It's six minutes after 11. You're listening to James O'Brien on LBC. And I, I, I don't know there's a problem here because one of the lawyers involved in the case that we are about to discuss is quoted in the news as saying it is nuanced and complex. Now, normally, that's an invitation to us to, uh, to swim in the opposite direction to everybody and everybody in the British media who finds nuance and complexity, um, that they're almost allergic to it. Uh, however, on this one, it might be too nuanced and complex for our purposes because the equal pay claim that Tesco is facing is incredibly nuanced and complex when you look at it. I thought, when my attention was first drawn to this tale, that it was simply a case of women having discovered they were being paid considerably less than men for doing identical work. But it's not. It really isn't. What it's about is the discovery, if that's the right word to use, that people working in the shop were paid two or three quid an hour less than people working in the warehouse. Now, when you tot up the gender of those two workforces, there are many, many more men in the warehouse and women in the shop. But it's not exclusive. There is no evidence that men working in the shop were being paid more than women working in the shop. On the contrary, actually, as I understand it, the men who were doing the roles that have historically been predominantly carried out by women, this is the five C's historically, caring, cleaning, clerical, cashiering and catering, also tended to be underpaid. OK, so it's not that they check the contents of your undercrackers and then decide how much you're going to get paid. The warehouse workers get 11 quid an hour, the shop floor workers get 8 quid an hour. I, 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 we've used up Ben, haven't we? A brilliant barrister who rang just before the news. A lot of love coming in for Ben, but this isn't really his field of expertise. Um, uh, although he covered himself with glory when speaking from his field of expertise. This, this is what the law is for. We believe, says a lawyer representing the Tesco women, we believe an inherent bias has allowed store workers to be underpaid over many years. But then it's not actually a gender issue because they say themselves that the men doing these jobs also tended to be underpaid. I hope we can do this in a binary fashion, actually. I hope we can just do a right or wrong on this one. I, I don't know if this is going to sound outrageous, but 
I've worked in shops, and I haven't worked in a warehouse, but I have worked on a building site. And I think I deserved more money per hour when I worked on a building site than I did when I worked in a shop. Now, obviously, the majority of people that I worked alongside on a building site... Stop sniggering at the back, all right? It was a very long time ago, but I was very good at it. I was rubbish. Obviously, most of the people I worked alongside on, on, on the building sites where I toiled in Doncaster in 1988, to be precise, in case anybody wants a refund on their extension, I worked much harder and I worked mostly with men. Now... That was in the summer of that year. Christmas that year, I worked for the first time on the perfume counter in Beatty's in Worcester. And I got paid a bit less. And that seems to me perfectly fair. But I can't quite tell you why. I think it was because of how tired I was at the end of the day. And I find... I mean, historically, manual labour isn't more rewarded than the five Cs. So what, just tell me what you think about this story. I'll give you a few more details, actually, so that you can um, pick up your phone. It's about 100 shop assistants, but it's a test case who argue that they earn £3 an hour less than warehouse workers. I guess what I'm wondering is if I remove the words male and female from this story, do you cease to understand why it's coming to court at all? A law firm has launched legal action on behalf of nearly 100 shop assistants who say they earn as much as £3 an hour less than warehouse workers in similar roles. What do you think? 03456060973. Now I spin it around. A law firm has launched legal action on behalf of nearly 100 female shop assistants who say they earn as much as £3 an hour less than male warehouse workers in similar roles. Still innocuous? I, I obviously am on something of a journey with regard to feminism and, and modernity. I'm moving slightly faster than most people in my line of work, but still not fast enough for some. I, I'm afraid this might be me hitting the reverse gear a bit. I don't see this case as being a good idea. I also don't think that Tesco could survive a £4 billion hit at the moment, and I'm sure they'd rather have a job. Oh, no, I'm sounding like a mill owner. I'm sure they'd rather have a job, even if it is a bit underpaid, than have no job at all. I mean, that is how you end up with people queuing up at the docks waiting for a tap on the shoulder from the stevedore to tell them they've actually got some paid work today. But on the other hand, I'm a bloke. I'm not a particularly burly bloke, but I do think that it's harder work in a warehouse than it is in a shop. And if that is true, what do I mean by harder? I don't know. If that is true, then what is wrong with this? Come at this from whatever angle you like. And, and do you know what? I haven't said this for ages. Um, if you've never phoned me before, if you've never phoned a radio station before, this would be a lovely one to break your duck. Oddly, I should warn you, I am quite qualified on this. Most of the work I've done in my life outside journalism has been in retail. I've never worked in a supermarket, but I've worked in a variety of clothes shops, and I have done a little bit of manual labour. So it seems to me to be the case here that the warehouse work is harder than the shop floor work, although shop floor work will involve some lugging and carrying and and stacking and lifting. The warehouse work is harder, therefore it pays more. Discuss. And if that's true, is that fair? 0345 973 If the claim is successful, you could be looking at 200,000 shop floor staff trousering about 20 grand each, which is, from where I'm sitting, a pretty existential threat to Tesco itself. But why would you deserve, if you knew what you... I'm sorry, I'm not tying myself in knots. I just want to get everything else out there. If you knew how much you were being paid when you signed up to the job, can you, I'm no lawyer, but can you turn around five, six, seven years later and complain that somebody else doing a completely different job for the same company is getting paid more than you are? I'm going to call it, and I'm going to call it as crackers, all right? But I am, as ever, on this programme, open to correction. 0345 973 is the number that you need. Look, if, if I was sitting here now in the canteen at Tesco, chatting to Doris, who is on the tills, and comparing our pay slips, and it turned out I was getting 11 quid an hour to do exactly the same job as Doris, who was getting 8 quid an hour, then I could see why the lawyers might get involved. Even if Doris knew how much she was being paid when she signed up for the job, she didn't know that I was getting three quid an hour more. But if I'm working in the warehouse and getting paid more than Doris, and then when Doris compares her pay packet to the bloke sitting next to her in the canteen who does the same job as Doris, and it turns out to be the same, where's the discrimination? I, I, I hesitate always on legal issues to uh, 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 stick my oar in, but I, I can't see this one succeeding. I, I can't see quite how for all the complexity and the nuance described by the lawyer, 
I can't see quite how um, this can go any other way. But we'll find out what you think imminently. 03456060973. Before that, I don't know if you heard my alarm go off earlier. I, 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 I've got to be a little bit more professional about these matters. But I set it when I have to remind myself to say hello to people who, who've been particularly charming when I meet them going about my daily business. So um, today I am going to say hello to Amir down at the Lyric Theatre in Hammersmith where I popped in yesterday um, and, and Lucy as well. But Amir in particular, it was almost like he was rolling out the red carpet. It's a beautiful uh, outfit at the Lyric Theatre in Hammersmith. So I promised I'd say hello Amir and now I have. It's on Channel 4 on Sunday, the first Brit, Secrets of the 10,000 year old man. And the director of the documentary says um, that he hopes it will inform modern discussions about race and even Brexit. Good luck with that, mate. Um, you go back quite far and discover that everything's in flux, everything changes. That's the message of the film. Um, I've already had one response from somebody who presumably feels rather differently to me about both race and Brexit, claiming it's only 10%, only 10% of modern Britons come from this, uh, this black hunter-gatherer bloke, so don't read too much into it. What do you think I'm reading into it? I'm reading into it that we're all the same under the bonnet, the belief that we're not. Is what holds us back. But that's not what we're talking about now. We're talking about Tesco's. Ed's in Hackney. Ed, what have you got? Oh, hi, James. Oh. Um, so, you know, as you do, you know, uh, while I was studying, um, I did um, work at Tesco's and Iceland as you're well. Not, you're I, not going to get a Ray Liotta for this. You do know that, <laughs> don't you? <laughs> and I, did, um, I did both, you know, um, uh, shop floor and the warehouse. Um, yes. And actually, the warehouse is a lot more tougher than being on the shop floor. I think so, but uh, but I, I, I mean, well, no, I'll just let you speak. Someone can ring in and deny it, but you need to have done both, and you have done both. I have done both. Well, there um, you go. You can speak. And and on the shop floor, obviously, you're replenishing the stock, you're tidying things up, you're helping customers, you're going on the till. Um, but whereas when you're going to the warehouse, you're lifting heavy loads, you're taking orders, you're actually, a lot of the times, um, you're also going to the freezers, which are really cold. The, the freezers out. are really what, Ed? The freezers, it's just like really, really cold. You have to Really cool. what? You what know, are they? Cold. Freezing, basically. <laughs> cold. <laughs> Thanks for that. Um, I'll alert the news desk. Can you let them know? Let Simon know the freezers in Tesco's are really, really cold. <laughs> but you know what I'm trying to say. Of course um, I do. Uh, and it's, it, it's and the warehouse is really tough. And actually, when I was on the shop floor and then I decided to go to the warehouse, the rate, the hourly rate went up by three pounds. Um, and the reason for that was because um, it's a lot more hard work. And the guys who do work in the warehouse, actually, they don't do the normal hours that the shop floor staff would do. They'd normally come in at something like four or five in the morning to actually... Uh, well, I, I am, I am going to night. conduct this hour in a slightly uh, irresponsible, because it's, it's, it's not as serious, obviously, as the conversations we were having in the last hour. So I am going to conduct yeah. this in a slightly more um, simplistic fashion, and I am going to say one nil to the warehouse workers. And I think so, and I've done both. And I've oh, exactly. No, and Dave really makes a brilliant time. point on, on, on Twitter. A tweet to at Mr James O'B. He agrees with you that warehouse stockroom work is far more difficult and harder to fill than shop floor work. This isn't controversial. And he adds something missing from your analysis. If the shop workers want more money, they could always ask to be moved to the warehouse. And that's true. And it does, uh, you know, um, they don't get paid, you know, two, three pounds extra for no reason. Um, it is because, you know, they get dirty... They're lifting stuff up, they're moving things, they're going into the freezer and all sorts of things. And they're also bringing things out to the shop floor. And I've been on the shop floor, I've done it at both Tesco. No, you said, I, I, I think I'm with you. I think, I think, well, one nil to the warehouse workers then. 22 minutes after 11, there is, of course, plenty of room for the uh, shop, shop floor workers to equalise, possibly even pull ahead. Although uh, probably not as far ahead as Swansea managed last night against Notts County. Dave's in Deptford. Dave, what have you got? Uh, hopefully this will throw something into the mix as well. My opinion um, perhaps mirrors your last caller, and that yes. is I think the warehouse workers do deserve more pay. And have you and done either job, Dave? I, I actually have worked in a warehouse. I haven't worked on a shop, but I've worked in an office as well. Right. Um, but from my perspective, a warehouse worker I classify as warehouse and industrial, and the accidents that occur in those environments are far greater than you'd find on a shop floor, and they're, therefore they're in a much riskier part of the business 
or a riskier job than, than someone working on a shop floor. I appreciate people can slip over on a on a wet or greasy floor um, in a supermarket, but quite honestly, when you're stacking pallets and um, and heavy materials and something perhaps may fall on you, um, there's greater chance of, of, of being injured. And I think from that perspective, it's... It's a no-brainer for me. It's also... I mean, we're not talking about the Salvation Army, are we, or CAFOD? We're talking about a company that, until very recently, had a reputation for rapaciously maximising profits at the cost of pretty much everything. This is why we ended up eating horses. So they wouldn't pay more to their warehouse workers unless they felt they have to. These companies pay as little as they can reasonably get away with. And, and this would suggest that they can't fill the jobs in the warehouse unless they pay 11 quid, and they can comfortably fill all the jobs in the shop by paying 8 quid. I don't want this to go unanimous, Dave. It's always boring when things go unanimous. It's two nil to the warehouse workers. Well, I hope, I hope the courts decide the same fate because I think for Tesco's to take on a four billion deficit, especially with their history, I, mean, I think would just about, well, be a nightmare. If it's two moment. identical jobs... Uh, yeah, but then remember when it was female cleaners and dinner ladies working for a council, I think, in Birmingham, who found out they'd been paid less than bin men or male street cleaners... They don't have to be identical jobs, you know, apples and, and, and apples, but it could be a Cox's Orange Pippin and a Pink Lady. You could be comparing two different types of... Do you think I've stretched this analogy too far, Dave? Well, I think Pink Ladies, you know, I'm expecting to put a frock on now. The pink Ladies um, are lovely. Go to Marks and Spencer's, Pink Ladies, the French ones, absolutely delicious. Eat them while you can, mate. It's uh, 25 minutes after 11 and Kevin is in Milton Regis. 2-0 to the warehouse workers. What do you think, Kevin? Um, well, I, I, I must admit I have a, a vested interest in this because I work for another major supermarket and we may have a similar scheme going through. Oh. Um, but what I will say, I've worked uh, in warehouse in the past. I now work in a supermarket. But the slight difference is I work within the supermarket, but I work, work in home shopping. And if you work in home shopping, as I do, loading, uh, loading things for the vans and also delivering, then you are doing a hell of a lot of really heavy donkey work. So there there is a little bit, bit of me, because uh, I'm on Sorry. your side, you know I am. So that's 3-0 to the warehouse workers, then? Uh, no, it isn't. Oh. No, I'm talking about home shopping, which is actually in-store. And working for home shopping, we are... No, we don't, no, don't bring them into it. We've got a straight battle between the warehouse workers and the shop floor. I don't want people who do a little bit of both. No, 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 it, it is in store. I, I used to work in the warehouse. Right. Uh, no, no, do, no, 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 we're doing uh, this binary and you're making it more complicated than it is already. Um, now, what I'm saying is uh, I worked in store and I worked as hard, if not harder, as I ever did in the warehouse. Oh, I see. And when I worked in the warehouse, I, I, I drove a forklift, I had uh, pickers, I had various equipment to help me. Yeah. There's a lot of real donkey work involved. So the it's toughest job of all, shopping, the toughest job of all is the people that, that go through the shop doing the shopping for deliveries uh, well it's not actually the, the the picking it's when you're actually preparing the loads for delivery and also when you're out on the road if you're delivering a, a crate full of 20 uh, two litre bottles of cola up to the third floor, floor flat that is not easy work yeah i know i hope my mate's listening because he lives on a third floor <laughs> flat and he always pretends he's not in and his mum's on her own and he hides in his bedroom so that the poor fella has to bring all the shopping up all the three flights of stairs a lazy basket <laughs> i don't know how help, i don't know how helpful you've been though because this isn't the the, the job you describe is not part of this legal case this is because it's retrospective uh, well, uh, well it, it, it it could well be uh, it could become. My, my, I think there's a, there's a similar legal case going on with uh, the supermarket I work for, or there will be, or there may be, shall we say. Well, keep us in the loop, Kevin. We yeah. could get a world exclusive on that. <laughs> 27 minutes after 11, Mark's in Hitchin. Mark, I think that's 2-1 to the warehouse. What are you going to do? Uh, uh, well, James, I'm afraid I think I'm going to make it to all, I'm afraid. Oh, that's brilliant. Um, We're going to get another half an hour out of this. Come on. Oh, good. <laughs> well, let me explain to you. If, yes. if you go to the Equality and Human Rights Commission website... Yes. Um, what If you read the, the uh, what's been going on in the newspaper, the lawyers are claiming what is known um, as um, equivalent work. Yes. So therefore, uh, to do that, there's only three ways in the in the law that you can define that. You've either got to have like work, work that is rated as equivalent, and I'm afraid this is the one that's going to get you. And I'm going to quote it for you because mm. it's directly off the website. Go on then. Uh, because you'll you'll see when I finish it. So work of equivalent value. This is work which is not similar and has not been rated as equivalent. 
but oh. is of a, uh, but is of equivalent value in terms of demand such as effort, skill, and decision making. The example they give is a clerical assistant and a warehouse operative. Yeah, it's not. It's not. You haven't. You haven't quite shot my fox. Effort, skill, and what was the other one? Uh, warehouse operative. No effort, skill, and in terms of effort, skill, and sorry, effort, skill, and decision making. Effort, and the skill, example and they give is a clerical assistant. No, I heard you. Operative. I know. I see why yeah. you think you're so clever. I'm not clever at all. I'm just telling you. Coming here with your facts. Coming here with your facts and undermining our strongly (laughs) held opinions. Who do you think you are? But I don't think I'm going to go all in on that. I I, I will register that it's now to all. um, But I think I think I could, if if I were a lawyer, and possessed of strong argumentative skills, which obviously I'm not, I I could argue that there isn't similar levels of effort, skill, and decision making here. You can point out the clerical assistant and a warehouse worker, but but this isn't about clerical assistants, this is about shop assistants. Well, well, yeah, but shop assistants, uh, and you quite rightly point out to people, uh, if I, if, and I'm going to give it to you from an ex-employer point of view, yep. you're, moving, you're moving stock. Yeah. Uh, They're not pallets full of it. Uh, well, yes, but, it, well, actually, that's not true. Because, I, I uh, think, okay, here's the deal. Point. Here's the deal that yep. breaks your point. I, I, think a cleric, okay. I think a clerical assistant is harder work than being a shop assistant. Boom. Um, well, actually, as you may you may say that, but oh, actually, if I look at this particular set of people, they're telling it's equivalent work. So you have a it's different not, opinion there. It's not equivalent work. You, the, the, the example they've given is a clerical job. assistant is equivalent to a warehouse assistant. I can accommodate that claim by yeah. responding that, yes, sir, that's absolutely fine. But I think a clerical assistant is not equivalent to a shop assistant. Yeah, but it's of equal value, which no, is where the law It's not of equal on, value. But, well, what, no, if it was I'm of equal value, I'd have to pay more to fill the vacancy, but I don't. Uh, well, well, actually, if, if if you had the clerical assistant at Tesco find out that the um, warehouse operative in their warehouse is earning more than he or she, I think that uh, if she has a very smart lawyer, he'll get the Equality and Human Rights Commission... Well, they're obviously, um, they, they, they obviously feel as you do, but equally, when the lawyer says it's very nuanced and complicated, I, I, it, it suggests that they don't think this is a home run by any stretch of the imagination, and no doubt they will attempt to use that precedent and argue that being a clerical assistant is an equivalent job to being a, to being a shop assistant, but it, it, I, I genuinely, I mean, I have, I've kind of done all three jobs, and... But then you know what you should have done, don't you, Mark, to really spank me? Go on. You should have said, so honestly, the more physically tiring a job is, the more you should be paid. How does sitting on your backside for three hours every day, shooting your gob off about whatever is unfolding under the sun, you shouldn't get paid at all. And the poor you fella who's cleaning well, cleaning the studio should be on a, you know, a six-figure salary. Oh, this is true. Maybe that woman who comes in cleans your studios and has a long chat with you, maybe she should get paid the same. It's a no. bloke. It's not a she, it's a he. It's my mate Juan. Oh, well, I'm sorry if I sound sexist. That That's is. all right. If you have fallen into a slightly sexist trope there, but it's um, he's giggling on the other side of the glass now. I can see him. He's got a very bushy beard at the moment, so if he is a woman, he's doing a very good job of disguising it. And with 20 or so minutes of this still to run, the score is 2-2. Two, two. Two to the warehouse workers, two to the shop floor workers. Remember, if it ends as a draw, I get the casting vote. And at the moment, I am leaning towards the conclusion that working in a warehouse is harder than working on a shop floor, and therefore there is nothing discriminatory about the fact that warehouse workers get paid more than shop workers do at Tesco, even if it turns out that the majority of the warehouse workers are male and the majority of the shop floor workers are female. A few other points. I was just trying to get a quick round-up of what's going on on social media. It's a bit like Noel Edmonds, then. I do apologise. Let's just look at Twitter, um, where a few people... I like this one from Sasquatch. Uh, A shop assistant can be cheaply replaced by a self-scanning till. A warehouse operative can't be cheaply replaced. There is a word missing from your analysis. Miss, Mrs or Mr, or none of the above Sasquatch. And that word is yet. It is not far off, I'm afraid, when a warehouse operative can't be cheaply replaced by some sort of robot. Um, Which is why, at some point in the next year, before the end of this year, we're going to have a proper chat about universal basic income. Because seriously, it it feels like it has to happen at some point, for precisely the reasons picked up there. How? how? I mean, once everyone's job has been done by a robot, what are we all going to live on? Thank God you'll still need people to wind you up on the radio every morning. It's 11.38. Mandy is in Enfield. Back to the battle. The battle of the shop and the warehouse, Mandy. Which side are you on and why? Um, I'm on both sides. You Isn't can't be on both uh, sides. What are you, a Liberal I Democrat? No, 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 no. I've done warehouse work in a warehouse that's for car parts. And it's heavy car parts. Right. You've got gasket heads. You know, you've got big bulky stuff on it. Big bumpers, ends? Any big ends? 
Yeah, got loads of big M's. Big M's, yeah. Well, <laughs> can't be careful of those. You name it. You, you name it on a car, we, we, we do it, you know? Okay, we yes. Do, we do lorry parts. So I've been in both. The warehouse work is hard, and I'm, I'm not going to deny that, but it's as hard as what you make it to be. Right. So, you know, if you're putting your feet and lifting stuff and you're, like, dragging your feet, then you're going to make it hard for yourself. You just get on with the job and crack on with it. Yeah. Then it makes it, you know, the day go easier. But then I've worked in the shop also. Right. I worked in the shop for 10 years and I was up and down London, you know, minimum wage. Yeah. Train fares costing a fortune. Yeah. So I had to leave because I couldn't afford to travel up and down Kensington. But I got attacked twice in the shop by a customer. Really? And I was on minimum wage. Yeah. I got, you know, a bloke was stalking a lady. I called the police. The bloke got the phone, smashed it in my face. You know, so I got escorted you've, down by the police. You've, you've, so... You've... I was going to make quite a flippant point, but you being attacked have, have, have made the same point in a much more serious fashion, and that is that the, the big thing about being a shop worker as opposed to a warehouse worker is the public. You have to deal with the public, and that can yeah. be an absolute blinking I, nightmare. No. Nah. I mean, I'm, I'm a driver now. I, yeah. I've got my forklift license, and I still do warehouse work, you know, when I need to, but I'm a driver. I'm on the road 24-7, and the accidents I see, you know, the toll pollings that are on the road are not very nice to see. Yes. Uh, it's not, it's, it's, it's horrible. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love my job. I love my job. But every uh, job has yes, swings I'm, and roundabouts, I'm, is what you're telling yes, us. exactly. And if, if, if you make it hard, it's going to be hard. If you make it easy, then that's No, I get, I get that as well. I mean, I, the, the day, I mean, I was in a shop, if you were busy, the, the day was half as long as it was if no customers came in, because being busy is always, um, uh, always makes the clock seem to tick faster, doesn't it? Yes, of course it does, yeah. But then you make yourself busy in a shop. You tidy the rails, you pick the hangers up, you clean the changing rooms, you clean the mirrors, you go into the storeroom, you, you sort out your stock. So you make yourself busy. The problem but is this, Mandy. All right, here's the problem. You've got to pick a side. Um, driving. Hey? I've got a that's driving. Not, that's not that. It's, it's warehouse versus shop. You can't have a driving. Oh, no, no, no. I'm putting driving in because... You can't put driving in. You can't just, just ring it. You can't. This is an important legal matter, Manda. You can't just throw in flipping red herrings willy-nilly. <laughs> um, Shops or warehouse? What's hard? Who deserves shop. it? What? Shop. Oh, my shop. Lord. That was 2-0 down to 3-2 up. Yeah, shop. All right. So, all right, that's fine. The shop workers don't necessarily deserve more, but they certainly deserve the same as the warehouse workers. But don't forget the drivers, all right? Whatever. Well, somebody think of the drivers. It's 11.41. Mandy, you have got an absolutely delightful laugh. I look forward to hearing it again one day. Sarah is in Watford. Sarah, what do you think? Well, I work in retail. Yes. And I have about a dozen ladies working for me. Mm -hmm. And there's about four warehouses in our store. You've got the main one where the delivery comes in. Yeah. And then we have to go down and get all them cages and put them into your relevant sections. Oh. So my ladies, there's 12 of us, we have to pull it all along the shop floor, up the, up the lift, along the top shop floor, and then into our warehouse, and then work our warehouse. But... So you yeah. are you are suggesting that we've we've been indulging in a bit of a false dichotomy by thinking that warehouse and shop were completely separate things. In fact, it's the crossover that makes you think it's unfair that you get paid less than the people who are in the warehouse full time because you do plenty of lugging and similar yourself. Yes, hundred percent. Oh, you don't work for Tesco, do you? <laughs> Dare I say? Oh no. <laughs> I think we, is this a Ray Liotta? No, we can't have a Ray Liotta on someone who works in Tesco. It's not like I haven't been to the m m moon, is it? <laughs> and there's lots of how many people work for Tesco, but you are smack in the middle of this story. And when normally, if you're smack in the middle of the story, you get a Ray Liotta. Well, I deserve a Ray Liotta then. Come on then. I'm Ray Liotta, and you're listening to James O'Brien on LBC. <laughs> if you build it, they will come. And here she is. So, how is? I mean, what's the feeling on the, amongst your ladies then? I mean, are you aware of that you were aware of this case and, and you're presumably crossing your fingers it comes off because you could all be 20 quid, 20 grand to the good? Well, no, they're, they're all, we were all discussing it yesterday and last week and yeah. what they're saying. But if, if it does come off, then we work in the warehouse just as much as the shop floor. But uh, you're, 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 on paper, you're a shop worker. Some of them aren't. No, some of them are in the warehouse. But they don't just work the warehouse because they have days off. And, and, and do other things. Around. Yeah, you have to do everything. The people that are full-time in the warehouse on 11 quid an hour, the people who are full-time in the shop on 8 quid an hour, fair or unfair? 
unfair. Because you think the shop work is as hard as the warehouse work, and often it crosses over anyway. 100%, yeah, and it crosses over. But if you wanted to get paid more, you could just transfer to the warehouse. No, it doesn't work like that. Oh, this is yeah. nuts. All right, so is that 3-2 now? Yes. Or 4-2? 3-2? 3-2, isn't it? Three. Was it 2-2 two, two when you rang in? I think so. Yeah, 3-2. This is what happened in 1966, isn't it? I don't know. 2-0 two two down, 3-2 up, West Germany, England. Yeah. No, 1970, 1970, the other way around. Oh, right, well, you've done it, and you've got a Ray Liotta. I'll tell you what, if someone had told me we were going to get a Ray Liotta on a conversation about Tesco staff, 4-4-2. Four, four Guys, it's just turning into a right old amateur hour, this. It's 4-2, Sarah. What are you doing telling me it's 3-2? It's 4 oh, I don't know anymore. I've it's lost it. Same here, mate. It's 4-2, all right? Carry on, and good luck. And if you make lots of money, if you all get 20 grand out of this, then, um, I, 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 I don't know, so, so remember your friends. It's really interesting, this, actually. The atmosphere here is I'm just talking about some legal action that could see Tesco hit with a £4 billion retrospective wage bill because shop workers get paid less than warehouse workers, and shop workers tend to be women while warehouse workers tend to be men, a genuine um, uh, a real multiplicity of positions, although it's currently 4-2 to the, to the, to the shop workers, who, who um, uh, people who believe that shop workers should get more, and every single contribution has been completely experience-based, culminating in, in Sarah, the last caller, who, who I mean, literally lives smack in the middle of this story. The atmosphere, says this contributor, is more relaxed in a warehouse because you don't have to deal with the general public. You can have more fun with your colleagues. Shop floor requires restraint and politeness. Customer service skills, etc. It's how we value roles that's out of balance. You could be right. A few of you are worried that Tesco will end up paying the warehouse worker less to bring parity with the store worker. That would be a bit of a backfire, wouldn't it? Um, and I agree with that bottom point about the atmosphere being easier in the warehouse because how many times have I told you what I was doing when news of Margaret Thatcher's resignation as Prime Minister reached Worcester? That's right. I was fast asleep in an igloo made out of shoeboxes in the stock room at River Island on Worcester High Street, sleeping off a hangover when my mate Dave came in to tell me the news because he knew I'd done an A-level in politics. I could not have got away with having a snooze in an igloo made out of shoeboxes in the middle of the shop floor of River Island in Worcester. So there is a more relaxed atmosphere in the warehouse, but equally Equally, um, we didn't really have lots of forklift trucks and heavy machinery. You don't really run the risk of getting killed in a shop in quite the same way that you do in a warehouse. 4-2, it's all to play for at 10 to 12. Mark's in Banbury. Mark, what do you think? Good morning, James. Um, well, I've got a, a different view on it. I Good. started in favour of the warehouse, and I think I've talked myself into the favour of the shop floor workers. Oh, oh go on. Um, I used to be a manager in Tesco's on the night shift. Yeah. And, uh, well, essentially, uh, we would be under pressure to get the store right. So if a delivery came in, I would drag everyone off the shop floor to come and help drag in this delivery. And similarly, if the shop floor wasn't right, I would take everyone out of the warehouse and get them stocking shelves. So, it's, it's so what, hang on, why were you on the side of the warehouse? I'm a bit confused as, as not to where, you, where you've ended up, but where you started out. Why were you on the side of the warehouse workers at the beginning? Because you forgot what it was like to be a Tesco manager. Well, I, I mean, <laughs> to be honest, as the manager, you're, you're doing the warehouse job a lot more. You're dragging in all the deliveries. You're always out the back managing the stock. And, I, and that sticks in my mind, as that's really hard work. For everything that from everything the previous callers have said, it is hard work, it is dangerous. But at the same but time... But I, I, I don't know if you and Sarah are queering the pitch a bit, because it's, 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 it's been presented, at least, by the lawyers representing the Tesco women as a, as, a, as a binary issue between store workers and warehouse workers, but you're suggesting yeah. that that's a blurred line anyway. This isn't actually part, as far as I can tell, of any of the rationales or justifications offered up for the legal action at this point. No one's saying, but I spend a lot of time in... They're claiming there is manual work involved in the job, but that it's not... You're not in the warehouse... Oh, here you go. No, Pam Jenkins, 57, 26 years at Tesco. She worked in Bulldog in Hertfordshire. That wasn't yours, was it, Mark? No. Oh, that would have been a small world award, wouldn't it? She gets £8 an hour. Um, she lost out when the premium pay rates for Sunday shifts were reduced recently, and she says yeah. she's got to collect stock from the warehouse, she's got to stock the shelves, and she's got to deal with the customers. Um, and that doesn't sound like equal pay, does it? Absolutely not, no. I mean, I mean, it is a very blurred line. I mean, you can have a job title as a warehouse worker and 100% be out on the shop floor all day talking to customers. 
It's not discrimination, though, because it's just a historical coincidence, isn't it, that the, that the shop work is more likely to be a woman and the warehouse work is more likely to be a man? I mean, there's not, there's no I, entry criteria. No, I, I would say, I would say, yes, coincidence, and and I would happily bring in, or well, the the female shop assistants, and we would all be dragging cages of stock through the warehouse. So it wasn't like ever a case of... Uh, what were those idiots thinking second, of earlier who were on the side of the warehouse workers then? That early 2-0 lead, what a bunch of Muppets. <laughs> Can't quite believe it. <laughs> Takes all sorts. That's 5-2 then. Uh, I think so. 5-2 to the shop. So this is going to go. Crikey. I mean, it'll be a class action, this, or whatever the British equivalent is. I can never remember. So the lawyers will be on a percentage of whatever the final take is. You might want to, might want to buy into that if you can. Buy shares in this legal case. Looks like they're going to win it just entirely on the basis of the anecdotal evidence we've been hearing on this programme. Steve's in Brent. Steve, what do you think? Hello, James. How are mate? All good, mate. What's on your mind? So I've done myself a little bit of retail, a little bit of warehouse work as well. Yes. And I've got you are a man of... of many talents, Steve. Oh, indeed, indeed, James. Just ask the missus. <laughs> uh, I, I uh, actually think both jobs have their own challenges and their own unique uh, facets to them. Um... I've got to say, though, personally, in the warehouse, I found myself reflecting a lot more on the day. I was on my own time. The stock doesn't talk back like a customer does. Mm. But that's a good and a bad, I've isn't it? Therapy. Oh, indeed, of course, yes. But I do think generally women are probably better at dealing with customers on the shop floor. Uh, and, Possibly. you know, men, maybe they get that alone time just to, you know pen back the anger and you know just have a little think yeah have a little uh mooch with the stock it, it can be quite therapeutic hey, you know but mate, you are at. talking to a man who spent a significant part of 1990 asleep in an igloo made out of shoeboxes in the stock room at river island clothing so i do know the therapeutic nature of a stock room or a warehouse or the bit where you're not observed and you kind of have a task to do it's different in tesco it. probably because the logistics will be a lot more closely monitored but you've just got to shift x amount of gumph from a to b and and you just get on with it don't you you don't have that constant risk of you don't know what your day is going to involve in That's the shop it. You could be in the middle of cleaning up some ketchup and someone comes along and asks you for directions to the mustard aisle. That's it. That's the one. Or you, I mean, could, you, get know, a, you uh... could get a live one, as we used to say. You could get a real live one who, who you know you're going to spend an hour with and not sell any... Well, that's different in menswear, but you, you're going to spend an awful lot of time with someone and it's going to be an utterly thankless experience. That's it. That's exactly it. And it, it's like cleaning houses. You know, you see a dirty house, you go inside, you give it a clean... You get that sense of satisfaction by the end. You go home, you make yourself a nice dinner, and that's a good day's work. Yes. Whereas, you, you know, you could bring home the problems that, you, that a customer's given you, a bit of grief that they've given you. You could bring that into to the house with you, and that's not what you want. It's a so. very good point. Emma sent me, a, I mean, a particularly grim story about a woman who was at work in a supermarket when she was attacked and, and, and murdered in front of shoppers so you do have that risk of of customer facing it's not ideal is it it's not ideal mate no but sarah got attacked i mean you know there's there's oh, some grim stuff unfolding so you are you are saying yes it, it should they should be paid the same i think i think so james yeah oh mate this is a spanking that i did not see coming six two there you go there you go steve did a very good job there of containing his excitement David is in Hammersmith. David, what would you like to say? Uh, well, I, the the one thing that people seem to be forgetting in this whole argument yeah. is that the warehouse is actually the the engine room of any business. I, I run a Christmas decoration business, obviously seasonally. Yes. Um, but um, I also I work in both the shop. I run shops and I also run the warehouse. And without the warehouse working properly, nor would the shops. If the shops don't work properly, they don't take any money. Nobody gets paid. Uh, so essentially, the warehouse is of a bit more importance. I don't think the the pay difference should be as, as much as it is with it being three pounds, maybe one one fifty. But the, the, I think they're, 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 the warehouse is just a little bit more important. And we maybe need to clarify between the the, the kind of 
off-site warehouses, the distribution centres, if you will, and the warehouses that are attached to the shops? Because it seems to me that the warehouses... Well, the warehouse is attached to a shop is essentially a storeroom. Yes, exactly. The warehouse that is actually outside where people have to bring the stuff in is a warehouse. Yeah. It's a very big building, generally, depending, obviously, the size of your business. Clearly. What do you do the rest of the year, then, if you're in the Christmas uh, decorations I, business? I, I do delivery work for a French food company. Blimey. I, I think you're coming down on the side of the warehouse then. I, I know you've said it shouldn't be a, as big a gap, but that's supply and demand, isn't it? That's, uh, that's what you've got to pay to get the bodies. Yeah, it, it may be the case that that is why they have to pay as much as they do in the, in the difference, but I, personally, being that I've worked in both um, and having heard all the arguments that everybody else has put up, mm. I don't think the difference should be as much as it is but I do think the warehouse should be considered to be the more important part of the business because, as I say, three. without it working properly, it will not. none of the rest of the business will work properly. That's 6-3. Um, Dave, thank you. David, and finally, I think on this one glance at the clock, Andy's in Hartford. You're going to have to score a hat-trick in one phone call. I don't think that's physically or mentally possible. I'll give it a go. go it's on, at least 6-4. Uh, <laughs> one thing that hasn't been discussed is market value. Yes. If Tesco's can show that warehouse staff across the industry get paid £11 an hour um, and that the people are hired on the basis of their warehouse staff, not shop assistants, yes. then I don't think the case will stand at Well, all. you've got the Equality yeah. and Human Rights Commission talking about work of equal <laughs> value. Well, that's to the well. If, if if it can be shown that the the work across the industry and the warehouse staff are paid generally around that, Tesco can justifiably say that they advertise at that rate to attract good quality staff. Um, so, you know, six the, four. The other thing is actually a non sector. Yeah, six four, isn't it? I can't give you more than one goal. So, yeah. Right, so it's only really six four. But I would say that if there is extra time, which there isn't, then it could have ended up all square. I'm not going to use the football analogy too often, I don't think, but I do when I use it, love it.